Okay, so TMI Monday with you sincerely. Always a delight to have you join us every other day on the show, TMI. Okay, we're just sticking it up a little bit, and uh, in a short while, we'll be on the distance to bring the show to a close. I told you that we're having some artists in the studio to talk with us on the program. First is Afebwame. Afebwame is a gospel artist. Uh, at some point in his life, he had an encounter that changed his life, that changed his story, and that has been the definition of his new life. I feel about my main thanks for joining me on the program, TM. No, How are you? I'm fine, sir. Okay, so uh, yeah, tell us about yourself in terms of your upbringing, in terms of your encounters, and then how you came into gospel music. Was it always a part of your life? Yeah, my upbringing was perfectly sweet mm. until I lost my mother's uh, father. Mm. Because he has been the one taking care of Your mother's me. father? Yes, my where, mother's where, was father. Your, where was your father? Where was your mother? My mother, I never grew up to know them except my grandmother who, took, mm. who brought me up. Okay. I grew up in the Uneme Irunu, in Akoko Edo local government area. Are you from Akoko Edo? Yeah, I'm from Akoko Edo. So which means you are from Edo State? I'm from Edo State. Okay, fantastic. And my father is from a Shaba family mm. in the Uneme Akiosu. Okay. So I don't really know what happened between my mom and my dad, but I only remember they told me I was three years old mm. when they divorced. Mm. It was when I now grew up to the age of 14 years old. That was when my mother told me what caused what, that, what what that, what that, that divorce. Anyway, let's, let's, let's not go into that okay. now. Let's, let's focus on you as a person. What, what was growing up like for you? Growing up, for me, I grew up as a Muslim. But my mother's father was not, he's not a Christian, he's not a Muslim. <laughs> so what, what was she? So what was she, she wasn't a Muslim, she wasn't a Christian. She was a traditionalist. She was a, uh, so there's, there's only some, no vacuum. Yeah, there can never be vacuum. Okay. So he, his elder brother called Saliu Ojo, in mm. Unemirunu, is a Muslim. Okay. And the man loved me so much that each time he converted, he made me to become a, a Muslim because as I was growing up, I was the only young growing up, a grandchild, very close to him. Mm. So there is a, the mosque in Unemeruno is very close to my mother's father's house. Okay. So each time when it comes to mosque early morning, Go on. when it comes to mosque early morning, yeah. he comes to our house and knock our door and wake me up that I should go and fetch water for ablution. When me and he will be the, the mosque, when it's time for prayer, he will mm. tell me, I feel Go and call to prayer. Mm. So that he was the one that made me to become a Muslim. And I love being a Muslim because it, the man showed me love so much. Mm. So when I was now growing up, I never knew my dad. So I grew up in Nemerunu. So there was a time I had the stomach upset. This man, he used all the traditional medicine he, he, he knew the stomach keep on disturbing me. One day, he now carried me, he said, I feel bad, I feel bad, I feel bad, baby. He will never go, he will be That was how he just looked into my eyes. What, 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 what does that mean? You are, you he, are, said, yeah. he said, the death that will take you mm. should take my life. Oh dear, that was, that's love. That was what he told that's, me. That's the love. best he did was, he now used his head to hit my hit head. Hit your head. Mm. Actually, after two, three days, and I became well. Wow. So about a few months later, my auntie in uh, Minanaja State now came to our hometown to take me to Naja State. Okay. That was how I left Unemirunu for Mina. So when I started attending school, my name is Afebwame Shaba. So people from Naja State, mostly from Bida, when I, if I tell them I'm from Edo State, they say I'm not from Edo State, that how come an Edo man is Shaba? Very Shaba. It's only in Bida, it's the only new people that mm. be a yeah, Shaba. How come you Shaba? I say Shaba is not even my name, it's not my father's name, it's not even my grandfather's name, it's my great grandfather's name. Mm. So that was how I grew up in Mina, Niger State. So I was living with my auntie. When my mother now came to Mina, she now took me from my, my auntie's hand. And after that, I attended Lima Wamude Primary School. That was when I finished my primary school in 1990. Okay. So let's, let's, let's fast forward a little bit uh, okay. to where. Um, you now became an adult. Some things happened in your life that changed your story. Sure. Uh, from you being a Muslim 
and then you became a Christian. What, what happened? How, how did that happen in your life? The very day I had the attack, it was right in Nugwa Market in Accra. I was a Muslim and I was doing fasting that very day. And I have been fasting right from when I was in my youth. So I went to, Niger to Nugwa Market to buy food stuff. There, there is a Nigeria man who is selling Nigeria food stuff in Nugwa Market in Accra. Okay. So after buying food stuff, and I gave the woman money. And she was collecting the money for me, about to give me change. That was how I started feeling stomach pain. My stomach, my stomach, my stomach. The woman said, what is wrong with you? Have you not eaten? I said, no, I've eaten. I'm, I'm fasting, but I've been fasting for a very long time. Long time, okay. So he said, oh, what is happening? He now said, will I drink a lakasara? She now brought lakasara for me. I could not drink it. She now brought bottle water. That was how I said, stretching, stretching. Then I said, this guy, maybe he did not die here. Where is your house? <laughs> that was how they told me out of the market. They now got a tizy. They asked, where is my house? And I told them where my house was. They now took me to my house. My brother from Agbede, it's also from Edo State too. When they now saw me, he said, we should, they should take me to hospital. Luckily, you know, when we got to Lake Man Hospital, they ushered me to emergency ward. Some of the doctors were just coming out from theater. When one of them saw the way I was shouting, mm. he now came to examine me, he said, what is wrong with this young man? He said, the young man is complaining of so much pain. Now. The man now examined me. He said, the way this young man is now, if we, if we should place him on medication, he might not survive till tomorrow morning. They should take him to theater. That was how they rushed me to the theater. When we go to the theater, some, some of the nurses are now caressing me, asking me questions. I don't even know what really happened. I never knew. Uh, the, they, you said they were caressing. I mean, they were looking after you. Yes, they, they pulled my, my trousers. Yes, of course, me. because you are a patient. So I, was not, to... <laughs> I never even knew what really happened. What, what was happening? What, what was really happening? Happen? It okay. was December 22nd, 2015. Mm. That's about uh, two, three days to Christmas. Yes. Okay. Do you know it was uh, February, February the 17th? And I realized I was, seen, I was in the hospital. Mm. That's, that when you, that's when you gained your consciousness. That, that was when I gained my consciousness. How do I even remember I was in the hospital? Was when the doc, one of the doctors was administering me medication. He now asked one of the nurses, Belinda, what is today's date? Belinda now said, today is uh, February 17th. That was when I realized. Mm. I was even in the hospital. I never even knew. The, I, I've, I've, I've already had perforated the urinary ulcer mm. surgery. So luckily enough, my diary in my room, in my wardrobe, the guy we are living together now went to the, my, my, my diary and I saw my family contact number. That was when he now called family my family members. in Nigeria. So my family now sent 30,000 naira. So the food that I was supposed to heal, we are not healing. Mm. Every after day, the surgery. After the surgery. After two months, the, the womb, we are still coming. Bad bath are coming out from my tummy. I don't know if I can bring open my... No, no, no. Because so Baba, Baba, yeah. Baba too was coming out from my tummy. The womb refused to heal. So later on, the surgeon now said they should, should do me for another surgery to know what is really happening to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So the surgeon, Mrs. Osofo, she's the... Her father is the best surgeon in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Her husband is the second best surgeon in Ghana. Are, she, they, are, are they Nigerians? They are, they are Ghanaians. They are Ghanaians. I had okay. this surgery in the Lake Man Hospital, Accra, Ghana. Okay, okay. So the woman has said, what will happen every day, they should be putting me on scale to know my weight so that they will know how they will be giving me medication. The first day they put me on the scale, on the scale I was weighing 35. <laughs> so when the, the hospital has said, I, I should pay 4,500 Ghana CD, mm. about 450,000 Naira. They now called my family, who, who sent 30,000 Naira down. They now told them they still need about 450,000 Naira. That was when my family stopped communicating with me. So like everybody else. Everybody abandoned me. Mm. So now the guy who was calling my family in Nigeria. Where is that, where is that your uncle? That, your uncle who, I mean, did everything. And where, where was he in all of this? You couldn't reach him. You couldn't track him. You couldn't Look, for him. me, people were contacting my family on my behalf because I cannot talk. If you talk, I can't talk. Wow. When wow. I see people talking, I will be asking God, when will I start to talk? Wow. So that was when, when, my, when the hospital managers keep coming in my family, no one was speaking call. Even my friend who has been talking to my family now had to bring my bag from my house. He said, in case if I die, he doesn't want them to come and be asking him, tell him to, to take my corpse anywhere mm. whatsoever. Mm. My family who have been sending money, who sent 30,000 dollars they stopped uh, contacting, communicating, communicating, communicating with yeah. Even when he called them, they don't pick calls. That was how he brought my bag. So he packed me. your he things out of his house. Out of his house. Got them to the hospital. 
brought me to the hospital. So it was the nurses in Lakeman Hospital that were now taking good care of me because they saw he was the one that brought me to the hospital. So when the, that same person that brought my things, he said, the other thing, whatever happened to them, not to concern, but my clothes, everything he brought them. So it was Lakeman nurses that were now my family, wow. my brother whatsoever. Wow. So one morning, when the soldier said, I'm going for another surgery, and I took my phone, and I screwed my number, and I remember some of my friends I have not contacted, and I called one brother who is from Edo State too. His name is Idemu Dia Okosu. When I now called me, and I said, bro, bro, happy new year. He said, February, what is wrong with you? Why would you be greeting me happy new year, February? I said, bro, I've been in the hospital since December. He said, which hospital? I said, Lakeman Hospital. He said, well, I know Lakeman Hospital very well. I'm going to drop my kids in school now. After I drop you there, I'll come and see you. That was how he came. When he came, when he saw me, he was crying. I said, bro, why are you crying? I'm so happy I've seen you for many days that nobody has come to look for me. Even my family in Nigeria, nobody has been contacting me again whatsoever. And I said, okay. When he was leaving, he now gave me money. After he was, he was stepping out, I remember he's a member of one church, Skull, in Accra. And I so much believe in a miracle. And I said, that there's money water you normally, people normally use from uh, TB Joshua. Please, do you have it? He now look at me, say, I feel what is wrong with you? You want, you want to joke me? You Muslims, you people believe in miracle. Mm. I said, bro, if I don't believe in miracle, will I tell you that I need, need money this. water? That was how he said, okay, if you say I should bring it for you, let me go and bring it. I have it in my car. When he was not bringing it, other patients in my ward, their family had been coming to see them. He was the one that came to, he's the only person that I've come to see me for, about, about, for many weeks now. He now said, uh, good morning, everybody. I remember also, as well, uh, synagogue of the show. Do people believe in miracle? I said, bros. What is wrong with you? I'm the one who made the request for this. Made a Why are you making it a general thing now? General. I said, no, that is, this is not how we do it. it was but eventually, eventually you collected it from me. Eventually, he just came and ministered in my tummy. He said I should open my, my bottle of water. He ministered it on it. Around 11, uh, 15 minutes after 12, the surgeon now sent a medical doctor to come to surgical ward in Lakeman Hospital and take me to lab for scan before bringing me to theatre for the second surgery. All the nurses on afternoon shift, they know that they scheduled me for surgery that very day. Mm. That was how they told me. They removed, there's a, there was a pipe here, four pipes in my, on my tummy. Wow. They now removed it. They now took me to lab. So we got to lab. When other patient waiting for lab test, about to conduct a lab test, when they saw me, they said, no, this guy, if the last person comes out, they should take him in. That was how they took me in. When the radiologist started the scanning, the first thing he said was, Dr. Ray, because the doctor came with my folder. He now gave the folder to him. He said, Dr. Ray, I found the two places where the fluid are coming out from his tummy. So if you are living here now, I will mean it on his folder, the exact place the surgeon will operate. As he was saying it, and I said, oh God of Prophet T.B. Joshua, the first surgeon never survived it. And the second one, they said, I'm going there today. And my family, nobody has self communicated the hospital management. I don't want to die, oh, please heal me, oh. I don't want to die. God of T.B., heal me, oh. That was how the, so the geologist kept on scanning, scanning, scanning. As he was scanning, he, he, he was minuting on my folder what the surgeon should do whatsoever. After about uh, 15, 10 to 15 minutes interval, the only thing I heard was he screamed, say, what? Dr. Ray, come, 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 I see. I can't find the two places where those two are coming out from wow. again. That was how the story of students. So I come, I saw it just now. That was how the man, the, the geologist started scanning, 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 scanning. When those holes were gone. Those holes, when he was tired. W w was that made you to give your, uh, that made you to give your heart? That, is that how you became a Christian? That was how I became a Christian. When he was tired, in that minute on my, on my folder, the surgeon should place him on oral medication. Mm. No more surgery? No more surgery. So you didn't have the second I surgery? I didn't have the second surgery. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the song that you have. What, what, that song, how, was it a result of this experience? What message did you get that you wanted to convey using that song, or you conveyed with that song? What's the message in the song? The message of that song is when everybody, with your boyfriend or your family forsake you, you are dead. If you hold on to God, mm. God, in spirit and truth, you yeah. cannot hold on to God doing one thing, using God to cover whatsoever. You will never get any result. Mm. But if when you focus all your requests, on God, yeah. He will send people from nowhere to help you. To help you. 
Like when I came back from hospital, when I was discharged from hospital, the miracle, I, I, I received two miracles that very day. I was still that same day, after that ministry, administration of that morning water, mm. my former boss in Semeboda, I was probably working as a cleaner for the journey in Semeboda. Okay. The, his director of NAV, NAVDAC, Israel Tabo. I was telling him the condition I was, whatsoever. he has not been sending me money, responding to me. That very day, I sent him a message. The last ABC that was coming from Nigeria to Ghana, he sent that driver 100,000 100, Naira to me. Wow. Okay. Um, interesting story. We'll, we'll take a listen to um, the song. It's an audio lyrics, actually. But it was a song that uh, came from uh, uh, Afoy Bame, uh, of course, based on his experience. Something very striking that he said, which is that at, at certain critical moments in our lives, it looks like we've been abandoned and there is no one to care for us. No one will be interested in what we are going through. But there is a God somewhere who sees everything and knows everything. And that if you serve him in truth and in spirit, you certainly will get your story turned around for the best. Take a listen. We'll be back with you in a moment. My conscience not find me guilty. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and the life I live be pleasing in your sight. Lord, Lord, you are my rock and redeemer. Lord, you are my rock and redeemer. Keep me Conscience not find me guilty. May the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, and the life I live be pleasing in your sight. Me, may my conscience not find me guilty. May the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, and the life I live be pleasing in your sight. Lord, Lord, you are my rock. Resurrection and the Life is the title of that one. It's done by Febwame. Febwame, congratulations to you. You titled that song Resurrection and Life. Why? God is so much interested in broken things. It will dry bone, rise again. Whatever situation we are, if you, if you see yourself being in a stop, it's a sign of God has... God, God is close to the shore mm. to come and override the storm you are into. Interesting. Even as at this hour I'm in this studio, people are called my friends. Before leaving Accra Ghana to record these songs, I went to meet them. They, they told me I should not even come. I should not go. There are people I'm looking on to mm. because I believe they will be happy seeing my progress. Yeah. They, even on Facebook, they stop communicating. They don't talk mm. to me anymore. Why? Is it because you changed from being Muslim to being a Christian? I don't know. They, they are even Christian like me. You. They, they don't want to associate with you. They don't want you. to associate with me. Last year, October, I was supposed to record this song last year, October. Mm. I trusted 500,000 Naira to his brother. I don't even know where he lives. We attend the same church together. For him to give me this 500,000 Naira till he did, it was the policeman that was able to force him to give me 100,000 out of the money. Mm. The four hundred thousand letter, I don't. It's, it's still that. with him. It's still with him as I'm talking to you now. Okay. Do Do you get discouraged by such things, or at you're all, more interested in at what, all, with the new life? At you all, have? what I do, yeah. once I see 
you are weighing me down. I just kiss you goodbye. Mm. I will not come to you again. But if I meet you, I will smile with you. Okay. Now, is this, is this um, a new ministry that you have found in terms of being a gospel artist? Sure. Life without Christ is a life full of crisis. Mm. Ever since I have accepted Christ over my life, the more I chase after it worse, it's worse, the more I discover myself. Like this morning before coming, a, a song came to me. I just woke up and I, I wrote it down. And it's another song. Like one of my songs, I've recorded four singles now. Four singles? Four singles. You have videos? Uh, no, no. But no I, they are all audio? I'm waiting for, they are all audio. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for me to copy the other four. Okay. Make, my album is uh, eight in, a, in one. Eight tr tracks? Eight tracks. Okay. In, in one album. So one of my songs that I included in the one I've recorded so far, it wasn't among the songs I wanted to record before. Okay. When I just walked into the studio, and the producer just came to me, and I told the producer, I have another inspiration have for another, another song. Okay. Said, well, that was how Interesting. Um, uh, the song is titled My Provider. Okay. So who, who is your role model in this gospel music that you found yourself in? Pana Paul. Pana Paul. Yes. Hmm. So how do you see yourself in the next, in the next five years? The next five years. The next five years, I'm going to record one song with Ero Kenoli in U.S. because that song is my travels. I compose it in my dialect, the dialect. and it, it's only when I see Ero Kenoli that is when I will be able to record you're going that to, song. You're going to sing that yeah, song. Yeah, I'm going to sing with him. <laughs> all right, all right. It's, it's been nice talking with you. Thank you, and, sir. Um, to hear your story and to see the impact that the Word of God has made in your life, the difference that Christ has made in your life is very, very inspirational, very motivational. And it's our prayer that you continue to stay in the faith Amen. and do greater things for God. Amen. I mean, you started on a path and you can see the steady progress that you are making. And that through your story, many more people will be inspired Amen. to believe God the more Amen. and then, of course, live for God. Because really, um, Life without Christ is a life full of crisis. Is, is, is a meaningless life. It's a wasteful life. It's a purposeful, I mean, it's a purposeless life. And it's a planless life. So, congratulations Thank to you. Thank you very much. Sir. Okay, now before we let you go, uh, you said there's a song that came to your spirit this morning. Yes. Can you do this song here in the studio? Sure. Okay, so you, you face that camera and do that song. Let's, let's hear you, as we call it a rap. Yes. Go ahead. With my sincere heart, with my sincere heart, and honest sleep, and honest sleep, oh Lord, I will give you praise. With my sincere heart and honest sleep, I will give you praise. Mm. Voice of joy is voice of Holy Spirit. Spirit move. God speaks. God will never do anything in our life without we speaking it. If you are sick, you don't speak God's word. He will never do anything. He will be watching you. Absolutely. So, so you have the power to speak and then yes, you see the results. Yes. God word, I for sure. If you don't speak God's word, you cannot see any result. It's only when you speak his word with your sincere heart. Mm -hmm. If you come into his house with your sincere heart and honestly, whatever you ask, during praise and worship, the only thing that warms God's heart is praise and worship. Once you praise God, worship God in spirit and truth, it dispenses angels mm. to meet your daily needs. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Afebwame is a gospel artist, and of course, he's been sharing with us his experiences, and uh, that inspiration just keeps coming at every point in time to get his song uh, recorded and then. Uh, Bless people and impact lives and change lives. Many thanks for coming on the show. Thank Congratulations you very much. to you. Very Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Well, it's the TMI Monday with you sincerely. We'll take a short break. On the other side, we'll also be talking with another artist. Uh, stay with us. We'll be back with you in a moment. Conscious, not farming, get it. 
May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and the life I live be pleasing in your sight. Conscious, not find me guilty. May the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, and the life I live be pleasing in your sight. Me, may my conscience not find me guilty. May the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, and the life I live be pleasing in your sight. Lord, Lord, you are my rock and redeemer. Lord, you are my rock and redeemer. Keep me from lifetime oh lord in your name my heart lives for joy hallelujah everyone is bread everyone is bread even those who say secure hallelujah everyone is bread everyone is bread even those who say secure hallelujah yes that is god told is he in my lifetime oh Tomorrow is in 